This is a bit of biology with Mr. Rock, and today we are going to be talking about passive transport. Now, one thing I'd like to say is the theme of this overall video is cell membranes, but we are going to talk about how certain molecules move across the cell membrane today. Before we begin that, we need to understand a couple definitions. So number one is diffusion. This is a process where molecules from areas of high concentration uh, to move to a low concentration. So the best example of this would be little seventh graders spraying axe all over, you know, in the hallway. They spray it and there's initially a high concentration, but those little axe molecules are going to move and spread out until that it's evenly distributed. So diffusion is high concentration to low concentration. Osmosis is where is pretty much just water diffusion, where water molecules are going to move in response to concentrations of solute. So water is going to move from high water concentration to low water concentration. And we'll get to that word solute here in a second. Equilibrium is the goal of diffusion. So molecules are going to move until they are at an equilibrium, which means there's an equal concentration of molecules on both sides or in the system, the molecules are evenly spread out. Each molecule has its own space. So molecules are going to move until they are at an equilibrium, until they're evenly spread out throughout a room, throughout a solution, throughout a cell. And then finally, the last word here is solute. You guys haven't seen this word yet, but it is a substance that is dissolved into a solution. So really, this could be salt, this could be sugars, this could be proteins. Um, this is anything that dissolves into a solution, which is like a liquid. So here we just have a couple different examples of diffusion. Um, with the one with the blue dye moving, uh, you put the blue dye molecules in, they start off at a very high concentration. It's a very high concentration. They slowly spread out and then eventually the whole entire glass tube is going to get turned to like a light blue color. It's originally a dark blue color but then it's going to spread out evenly till it reaches an equilibrium. So like I said at the beginning, this whole video is devoted to cell membranes and the idea of passive transport. One key idea that I need you to remember from the previous video, cell membrane structure, is that cell membranes are selectively permeable. So that means they let some things through because of their size, because they're small enough, but then other things they keep out. So passive transport is the idea that molecules are going to move across the cell membrane. In passive transport, like diffusion, the molecules are going to move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. With passive transport, there is not energy, no energy needed. So sometimes when we move big things across the cell membrane, we need a lot of energy. With passive transport that we're talking about today, no energy is required. And finally, there are going to be two types of passive transport. So the first is just diffusion. And with this, you do not need any proteins. For diffusion as passive transport, these are for really, really small molecules such as gas. Oxygen gas can just dissolve or diffuse across the cell membrane and you don't need any protein channels to help the gas move across. It's just able to move across the phospholipid bilayer because it's so small. When you get to bigger molecules, things like water, you are going to have facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is different than just regular diffusion because you need proteins. So the protein channels that are embedded in the membranes you need those in order to get certain molecules, molecules across. 
So water is a really good example of facilitated diffusion. It cannot move across the phospholipid bilayer by itself. It needs a protein channel, which is just going to be a, a thing called an aquaporin. And then the water is going to move like diffusion from high concentration to low concentration. This water movement we call osmosis. This is a big key idea. I need you to start this circle, do something to it. In osmosis, when we're talking about cells, the concentration of solute, the sugar, the salts, what have you, is going to determine where the water is moving. The solute cannot move across the cell membrane, but the water can through the protein channels, through diffusion. So the amount of solute is going to dictate how much water moves in the cell or how much water moves out the cell. So this picture just kind of illustrates, I have two pictures here. In this picture, because you're going to see this a lot in the problems, the green bubbles are going to equal the solute, which is the salt molecule. So here I have a, we could just call it a glass beaker and then a cell on the inside of the glass beaker. So the cell is sitting in a solution. The solution has a little bit of salt in it. And the water is going to move in response to the higher concentration of solute. So this is osmosis. So if there is a lot of water or if there's a lot of solute molecules in the cell on the left, the water is going to move to the higher concentration of solute. So water is going to move to the green dots. The water is just the blue dots. The picture on the right now is the opposite situation where there's a lot of water molecules inside of the cell and there's a lot of solute on the outside of the cell. So water is going to move to the higher concentration of solute. So water is going to move out of the cell and into the solution. It's kind of a tricky concept, but we're going to do some problems to kind of get, get the hang of it. So we actually do have some terms uh, in order to describe these things. So in a situation where the solute concentration is higher inside the cell than outside, we call that hypotonic. Hypotonic is solute concentration is higher inside the cell than outside. What is going to happen is water is going to move into the cell and this is going to cause the cell to get really, really big have a lot of pressure, we call that osmotic pressure. So water is going to move in, causes osmotic pressure because there's most, more solutes inside than outside. A student from last year said this and it actually works the best. When you hear hypo, think hippo. Hippos are really big and large and when a cell is hypotonic, it is going to get really big and large because there's more solutes on the inside than outside. The opposite situation is called hypertonic. Hypertonic is when the solute concentration is higher outside of the cell than inside. So if you look at the picture, there's a lot of water molecules on the inside and the water is going to move to the higher concentration of solute. So the little salt green bubbles, the water is going to move to them because that's where the higher concentration of solute is. This results in the water moving outside of the cell and then the cell shrivels up. So it gets like really tiny and deformed. Isotonic, another word for isotonic is just equilibrium. So when the inside and the outside of the cell are the same concentrations, it's at an equilibrium. So each cell is eventually going to hit uh, isotonic, which is same on the inside, same on the outside. And water is going to continue to move it in and out of the cell, but there's not going to be any net difference. So these arrows right here have water moving in and out of the cell, but the concentration is same on the inside than on the outside. So with these, there are some practice problems. There is a little bit of math, but the one thing I will say is if you know how to get the average of something, then you're going to be fine. So here we go. Practice problem number one. What 
if we put a cell in pure water, so zero solutes in there, pure water, what would the concentration be once the cell reaches equilibrium? For these problems, the only thing that you have to do is take the average. So there's a concentration outside and a concentration inside the cell. So you take the average, while well, you add them up, you divide them by two, and then that's going to be your answer. So you could try that now. You could pause the video and try it on your own. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here are the answers. So the solute concentration at equilibrium would be 10 grams per liter. There's 20 grams per liter inside the cell, zero grams per liter outside the cell because it's in pure water. We add those numbers up, 20 divided by two. If you're starting to get the hang of this, you could try this one on your own. What would the concentration be once the cell becomes isotonic? Last problem, I said equilibrium. This problem, I'm saying isotonic. Those words mean the same thing. So if you want to try it on your own, you take the average and you try to find out what the equilibrium concentration would be. Pause the video. Okay, once you've figured it out, check your work against mine. This is the solution. So we're sitting at 50 grams per liter for isotonic. So that's what it's going to be at equilibrium. The last problem that I'm going to have you do is a little more in depth because I want you to tell me if it's going to be hyper hypotonic or isotonic. So the last problem is what would happen if you placed a cell solute concentration of 20 grams per liter in a can of Sprite 60 grams per liter? What would the concentration be at equilibrium? So that is where you're just taking the average. Will water move in or out of the cell? So where is the water going to move? And then finally, is this current situation with the cell and the can of Sprite, is it hypertonic, hypotonic, or isotonic? Pause the video, try it out, and then once you're finished, press play. Welcome back. These are the answers. Uh, the water is going to move out of the cell because the higher concentration of solute is in the sugar. Uh, that we call hypertonic, and we're going to be at 40 grams per liter when it's at isotonic or equilibrium. This has been a bit of biology with Mr. Rock. I'm signing off.